What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about the episode 7 trailer for AHS 1984. And whether or not you saw my review for episode 6 of this series, you should know just right up front, I wasn't a huge fan of it. The biggest problem I had with last night's episode is the fact that it acted more as a bridge between the first five episodes and what is going to be the narrative of the last three episodes. Furthermore, I really don't like the idea that we've done an entire season based in the 1980s and focused on the slasher film genre, which they sold this as, and they're not playing with either of those elements to the best of their potential. Another thing that was kind of part of last night's episode was we're dealing with all the stuff in the series that we've seen over and over again. And I wish that we would be focusing on new and original content or maybe going back to something that we haven't touched in several years like <laughs> the aliens. Anyway, guys, I want to talk today about this trailer breakdown. And there's something in here that just makes me so happy as an American Horror Story fan. And I'm going to play this clip. You guys watch it and see if you notice what I noticed because this made me giddy. Everything okay? There's no services out here for miles. Everything's fine, officer. That's right, guys. Dylan McDermott is coming back to the series. And I'm hoping that he's going to be a really big role in these last couple episodes. And they're not just going to be using him for one episode. Of course, I haven't really looked this up. I, I didn't even know. I did know that this has been floating around there. Because before I started recording this, I looked up to make sure that was definitely him. And set photos leaked a while ago that kind of indicated that he was coming back for at least some stint in the show. I really hope it's more than just this one episode. And I'm wondering how Brooke and Dee Dee are going to come across him. I mean, he looks like a serial killer. And and maybe they're playing off of a real life serial killer like they've been doing throughout this entire season but I'm not entirely sure that my knowledge my knowledge and past serial killers especially from the late 80s early 90s isn't all that up to date so you guys tell me in the comment section below who he is really supposed to be because this doesn't give us any real indication of that but based on what they show us in the trailer later down the line and I'll show you we will talk about in a little bit obviously this guy is a little bit mentally deranged Redwood. Again, this is what I was talking about with my review for last night's episode, is the fact that the whole episode focused on just bringing the gang back together again and putting everyone back in Camp Redwood, not just the characters who have been stuck there ever since that fatal night in 1984. I'm not sure I believe it, and it needs to have some real grounding in order to get everyone there, all of it to make sense, and for any of it to be remotely entertaining. My biggest sticking point with this entire season, as much as I like it, is we're spending way too much time in Camp Redwood, and I wish that we would just leave it for right now. One day in the sun doesn't erase five years of darkness. So right now, it really looks like Brooke is the only body with any sense in her head. And given what we see at the very beginning of this trailer with Dylan McDermott's character and them running into him for some reason, it seems like she's the only one with any sense in this entire season. Just stay away from this situation. Yes, everyone thinks that she's dead, but if she shows up when she's not supposed to be, She's going back to prison. I mean, I don't understand what the story is going to be here, but it really has to be well told in order for any of this to make sense, as I keep saying. Another thing we see at the very end of this line is Montana's body being zipped up, which means we're going to be going more back and forth between 1984, 1985, maybe even 1998, or even another time skip just to get to that music festival. So, so it really does look like we're not done with skipping around in time, which is an American Horror Story staple, so that's not really a bad deal. To willingly come back, that makes you even more deranged than we thought. If I had to be honest, one of the best things about last night's episode was the focus between Xavier and Montana's character as well as Ray. I hope that they focus a little bit more on Ray, as I keep saying. I hope they do focus in this episode a little bit more on Ray's character because, as I keep saying, he is going to be the moral focus. You have to let me go. You killed half of this year, remember? Through this clip, it looks like Mr. Jingles makes his way back to Camp Redwood, and the ghosts from the past capture him and are probably going to torture him, maybe even kill him. Maybe they won't because they don't like him, and they're just going to make sure that he's uncomfortable. Because if they kill him, wouldn't his spirit be in Camp Redwood? Am I getting something about that wrong? I mean, they killed the campers, in last night's episode and yet we didn't get to see their bodies maybe they're gonna show up right now but 
Do you have to be alive and kill someone for someone's soul to be stuck at Camp Redwood? If that's the case, then I guess they could kill him with no repercussions. Is he still bound to Satan? Because I guess if they tried to kill him, he would just come back. I mean, the devil did make him come back for a real reason. Uh, honestly, I think what's really going to happen here is that Ray is going to come out of nowhere being sick of everyone's BS throughout this entire five-year period, and he is going to forgive Mr. Jingles for cutting his head off and putting it in the fridge and everything that he did by saving him. And maybe even something like that is going to be one of the ways that Ray ends up moving on past this kind of purgatory state, which I think would be pretty interesting. I mean, that is kind of a crazy concept, but you know, tell me in the comment section below whether you think it's a good one. What fresh hell is this? Wait, are they going to kill Dee Dee? Or is this just another fake out? Why bring her back at all unless she was just going to make sure that she got Brooke to Camp Redwood and then you don't really need her character? I really hope they don't do that because I'm going to have a big problem with it. Other than that, it looks like part of the episode as well is going to be focusing on the entire music festival that they're putting together and just bringing everyone back to Camp Redwood. Where do you psychos keep coming from? Finally, as I talked about at the very beginning of this video, Dylan McDermott's character is just going to come out of nowhere. One of the things that I was thinking about while I was recording this is maybe he is the person in white, the woman in white, because the description of next week's episode does deal with a hitchhiker that's been picked up. And one of the things that we've been speculating for a very long time is it was going to act in the same way that Jonas was. But if this guy is just a hitchhiker who is in the same vein of serial killer that we've seen throughout the entire season, then that kind of explains this last scene in the trailer. Brooke coming up against Dylan McDermott and having to fight her way through him before she makes her way to Camp Redwood in order to enact revenge or for whatever reasons they go there. Because it looks like, as I said earlier, she doesn't want to go there. She's the only one with a good head on her shoulders, and yet, for whatever reason, she's going to be dragged there. Maybe he's the one who drags them there. He kills Dee Dee, and that's just one of the ways that they get there, and then everyone else is going there on their own volition, or they're just going to do something convenient in order to get everyone there, or just everyone decides. So I'm not entirely sure. I guess one of the things that they could do with this character that I haven't really talked about as of yet is that he could be with Dee Dee. One of the things that they did with Dee Dee's character over the last couple episodes is establish that all of this stuff really runs in her blood. Her father was a serial killer. And that scene I was talking about last week that just really reminded me of a classic scene from one of the earlier seasons of Dexter. It's possible after everything that happened at Camp Redwood that she's really come to accept this part of her and now she hooks up with guys who are in that same vein as her father. Night Stalker, Mr. Jingles, and all these other people that she's been trying to help over the course of this season. But the interesting thing here is, if they're going to kill her off, then why even introduce any of this in the first place? I understand that she was there from the very beginning, and they kind of forgot about her at the end of last week's episode, but right now, there's no real reason after all these time skips to introduce her only to kill her off. So I really do believe that that's a fake out. And maybe, just maybe, Dylan McDermott's character is going to be with her and they're all three going to Camp Redwood for a specific purpose. And another interesting concept for Dee Dee's character is whether or not she's just going to be doing the exact same thing she did at the very beginning of the season and she's just simply bringing a couple of serial killers there to kind of reenact the entire night from which we saw at the beginning of the season. I mean that would be interesting too but it would seem like too much of a riff on everything that we've already seen and not really moving the story forward which is just my biggest gripe with this entire season thus far and the fact that we just keep coming back to Camp Redwood that we've not only seen to death in this season, but so many other seasons of American Horror Story at this point, it's not even overly shocking anymore. And I really hope they have something to shake up the broader narrative over the course of these three episodes that isn't just repeating the first five. I hope everyone did enjoy the video. Tell me in the comment section below what your thoughts, opinions, speculations, theories for episode 7 of American Horror Story 1984 is because I'm really interested to see what everyone's thoughts and opinions are. Last night's episode, as I said, wasn't the best, but I'm willing to live with that. I feel like it's been a decent season thus far, and if the last three episodes can stick the landing, then I feel like it will be one of the better seasons throughout the entire run over the last nine years. So, Guys, 
tell me all this in the comment section below. Let's keep the conversation going. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload. It's been real.